I don't think there's anything I want to do today than talk to the person we uh, I don't want to talk to right now. Um, met him a few years ago through a friend, and when I reached out to him, he invited me over to Houston. We spent some time doing some videos, and beside the videos, which were very, very educational, which were very, very helpful, um, his person, uh, first of all, if he tell you, sorry, come what, things that we don't do, and then, after I don't spend two hours with you, two, three hours with you, and then he tell me, he introduced himself for me. I was like, then you were this humble, you were this simple. And um, now one thing that way, I don't know this for our community, any person will be passionate about what they do, any person will be passionate about building a community, any person will be focused on how can I help my community. All of them are very, very humble people. Welcome to Toy the Boss. <laughs> uh, the, thank you for being for bringing me here. Uh, I'm just be excited for being here to read it. You are an incredible person. I'm just uh, proud. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I really get for thank you for coming because I know your schedule. I know how much one hour of your time costs. Before you for make our time, say hey, to read it, uh I'll answer the call. I will come when she don't talk. Um, that's a good thing. Now, I'm gonna start with. Tell us, I know so many people already know you, but for the few the way they joined today, tell us about you, uh, a little bit about your names and where you're from. My name is Charles Njoya, originally from Cameroon. <laughs> I am a, I am today a naturalized American, so mm -hmm. I, I live here with my family. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've been in, I'm, I've been in my profession for about 26 years now. Wow. And for 26 years, I have been through it all. I mean, you never say you've been through it all. Mm. I think I've seen a lot of things. I've been, I worked for, I started my career in Cameroon when mm -hmm. I left university. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to meet, to join. Um, at the time, PwC was number one, and mm -hmm. it still is at this point. Mm -hmm. So I joined PwC, and a couple of years later, I moved from Africa. They basically transferred me to the United to the UK. Mm -hmm. I was in the UK for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I became manager within PwC, mm -hmm. still in consulting, doing mm -hmm. audits, consulting, helping people with their taxes, uh, helping not people but mm -hmm. a lot of large corporations mm -hmm. because PwC deals with large corporations. Mm -hmm. Then I left PwC when I was I left PwC UK mm -hmm. and I came back to Africa as a manager mm -hmm. responsible for manager responsible for oil and gas division across uh, Francophone Africa. Um, so <coughs> I worked there. I went. I grew up to the position of non equity partner for PwC and I worked within that role for about for five years, mm -hmm. working at a very top level of my profession. Uh, left there. Joined, it joined PwC United States when I came to the US, still working at a very high level. And uh, my thing has really been looking at our community, seeing what we can do for our community within my threshold, the type of things I do. And uh, I think there's a lot that we can do to our community because being in this country is a blessing. That's true. And we can talk about that. Community, 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 community. How, how, like, tell, like, how, how does it feel? Like, when you look at our community, what comes to your mind? I think we are blessed people. Mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about I come, my community, mm -hmm. I look at Cameroon first. Mm -hmm. I look at Africans. Mm -hmm. I looked at I look at African Americans. Mm -hmm. I look at the people who are like me, who are in this land. Mm -hmm. Being in this land. Is a blessing. Mm -hmm. But the problem I see is that some of us haven't really understood this land and we are not taking any advantage mm -hmm. of it. I've been in finance for so many years. So mm -hmm. one, once I left PwC, I mm -hmm. didn't talk about that. When I left PwC, I joined a regional firm where I was partner in that regional firm. I run that firm for three years. It was a big, pretty big firm. Mm -hmm. So after that, I started my firm, mm -hmm. CHN Advisors, and we've been really out there trying to educate people, telling people how America works, especially I help people build, I, build, I help people to build what we call generational wealth mm -hmm. tax-free. Mm -hmm. That is really how 
I see most of these rich Americans, global billionaires, millionaires, that's how they have built wealth over the years. And I think we are in a position to do that. And that's what I try to push in our communities. Tax free. Yes. What do you mean by tax free? Tax free is simple. Mm -hmm. I'm a CPA. Mm -hmm. I'm a chartered accountant. Mm -hmm. I'm a, an expert contable. I've mm -hmm. been in this profession. I, I mean, when I say tax free, mm -hmm. it is most of the things I see in this community. Mm -hmm. um, and for everybody who is a businessman or mm -hmm. even an individual, mm -hmm. they will tell you that, and, and this is a fact, mm -hmm. tax is your biggest expense in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless you're really in that low income where mm -hmm. you are not paying any taxes, once you start making money, tax becomes your biggest expense. And I say this without any iota of a doubt. And for those who are of you who are making anything more than 400000 500000 a million dollars, you pay up to 50% of that money in taxes. Wow. Unless, unless you do something that is called either evade taxes, or you do something called tax avoidance, which many people mm. in our community do not know how to do. And that is where I come in. I help people. You build, when I talk of tax free, mm -hmm. I mean how to build your money, how to make money, mm -hmm. keep that money, mm -hmm. and then invest it in assets that avoid taxes, and then transfer it to the next generation, and then that next generation doesn't have to pay any taxes. You don't pay taxes now, and then the next generation doesn't pay taxes. That's why I call building wealth, mm -hmm. building equity, compounding your assets, mm -hmm. and then transfer it to the next generation tax-free. That is my focus. Wow. Uh, you talk. You talk about C N C H S. C H N Advisors. Yeah, tell us about that organization. So C H N Advisors is a company that we created um, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and the aim is we tell people that we are here to help you build your business. We are here mm -hmm. to help you keep your money. We are here to help you um, mm -hmm. to help you optimize. We help you restructure. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things I see with most of our business people in this mm -hmm. community is that structure is, is one of their biggest failures. Mm -hmm. They are not structured properly. Mm -hmm. And if you're not structured properly, you're going to pay a lot in taxes. Mm -hmm. And then because you don't want to pay a lot in taxes, you're going to evade taxes. Mm -hmm. And I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. I see this. Is a crime. It's a crime. Mm -hmm. You're going to evade taxes. Mm -hmm. And Without thinking about it being a crime, mm -hmm. there is also this aspect where you, you are basically taking an opportunity mm -hmm. for wealth building yeah. and then throwing it into the garden by doing that. 80% mm -hmm. of our CPAs, and I am not saying this to degrade any people, 80% mm -hmm. of our accountants um, are people who will tell you that when you go to them and you say, okay, I made a million dollars, I made $500,000, mm -hmm. how do we avoid these taxes? Mm -hmm. They will tell you that we are looking for deductions. Deductions at times when you're making money, especially as a consultant, you don't have many deductions. Mm -hmm. You should look for creative ways of structuring that money mm -hmm. in a way that you are going to avoid taxes legally. And there are so many of them out there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you have to know about America America is structured in four quadrants. Mm -hmm. I call them four quadrants. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the first quadrant of Americans are those you call employees. Mm -hmm. Employees in this country, they tend to pay about 40% of their income in taxes. And you pay that before you pay any other mm -hmm. thing because they take it directly mm -hmm. out of you. So you're an employee. <clears throat> the second quadrant is when you are, okay, you realize that, oh, this is a crazy place. America is for business people. I can tell you that for mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. It's a capital economy. Mm -hmm. And then as long as you're an employee, 90% of the time you are being ripped off. Mm -hmm. the, t the tax guy is ripping you off. Mm -hmm. The economy is ripping you off. Mm -hmm. The individual is ripping you off. Mm -hmm. At times they tell you that you're getting refunds. Refunds for me. General concept of a refund, when they say refunds, it's really for people, it's really for poor people. Mm -hmm. So I said there was the first quadrant which is really for employees. 
Mm -hmm. The second quadrant where you want to run to is quickly you realize that, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur. Let mm -hmm. me create something Same for myself. Mm -hmm. You jump from being an employee and then you come to the second quadrant, which is that for entrepreneurs. And in this quadrant, if you're not careful and you don't speak to the right people, mm -hmm. you're going to pay 60% of your income in taxes. Because in addition to that 40% mm -hmm. that you were paying on there, there is something here called self-employment tax, which is 15.3%. Mm -hmm. It's going to add to that. And then not only that, if you're not lucky to be in a state like Texas, mm -hmm. to be in a state like Florida, where mm -hmm. they don't have state taxes, you also have what they call state taxes that are added, compounded to that number then you can imagine how high you are. So 90% of people who are called entrepreneurs mm -hmm. are people who evade taxes. Because once they start making money, they are looking for ways mm -hmm. of, oh, I cannot pay all these taxes. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting what I call leverage with the right people, mm -hmm. speaking to the people who know these things, mm -hmm. because most of our people out there, mm -hmm. I'm not saying this to degrade anybody, mm -hmm. they are people who are garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. They take your information mm -hmm. to prepare your taxes, put it through a system, mm -hmm. and then just prepare it. That's, those are tax preparers. Mm -hmm. They just prepare it and give it to you. Mm -hmm. So they don't have any understanding of the tax laws mm -hmm. and how you can tweak it to be able to make you take advantage of those things that are out there. So 90% of the people who are in that second quadrant of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they are tax evaders. And because they do that, they don't have access to that thing mm -hmm. that America is all about, mm -hmm. which is helping you access other people's money. Mm -hmm. America is the largest capital market in the world by a mile. Mm -hmm. And when you are in the largest capital, the biggest problem of an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is access to capital. Mm -hmm. There's no other bigger problem. 90% mm -hmm. of startups, they fail because of cash flow everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you are in a place where you can have access to that. But because of your mindset, you completely avoid that access to capital because you're not using the right people. So when you're here, you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you're in that space where I call informal business. Mm -hmm. It is not you're in a sole proprietor, mm -hmm. a sole proprietor mm -hmm. or a single member LLC who is mm -hmm. just, you don't, or a partnership, not a single mm -hmm. member LLC. You're a sole proprietor in a partnership. Mm -hmm or general partnership. Those are, for me, those are really informal business setups. When you are here, you want to run very quickly and go to a third quadrant, mm -hmm. which we call the business quadrant. You're really a structured business. Mm -hmm. And when you're a structured business, you run from that 60% tax bracket now to a 21% tax bracket. Wow. Okay, so everybody, once you go down here, you want to run with here. Mm -hmm. And then there is 21%, because that's a flat rate, 21% mm -hmm. uh, according to the tax job and mm -hmm. tax cut and jobs act, 21%. And then when you're there, you're seated. Your next big step is to become what you call an investor. When you move to an investor, you're paying almost 0% in taxes. So the higher you go in America, the less you pay taxes. Let me tell you something. You know of Elon Musk? Yes. You know of Donald Trump? Yes. You know of all these boys who are the super people? Mm -hmm. the, there's been big noise that all oh, these people are not don't paying pay taxes. They don't pay taxes. Elon Musk did not pay taxes for almost two decades. But he was make, he was classified as have, as being worth, of, worth $68 billion at the time. They were, he was among the first five richest people in the world. But he didn't pay taxes for almost two decades. Whereas somebody walking Why? at Burger King is paying. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. This guy says this all the time. This mm -hmm. guy they call um, the guy. Uh, how do you call him? This Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. He yeah. says it all the time that I pay less, less. taxes than my secretary. Mm -hmm. He says it all the time, and that is the tax structure. The tax structure. So basically, when you have these four quadrants, an employee, mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Then you go to business, mm -hmm. and then you come down to, ex uh, to, to, to an investor. Those are the four quadrants for us to follow mm -hmm. and quickly get to where we avoid taxes altogether. And all these places, because of what you do, mm -hmm. there are so many tax, tax incentives. Some people call it loopholes. They are not loopholes. Mm -hmm. They are there for a purpose. A country, the primary purpose of any country 
a social rest, a social peace, mm -hmm. so that there should, be, there should be no unrest in the country. Mm -hmm. And what they do is, when people don't have jobs out there, mm -hmm. so there's going to be social unrest. Mm -hmm. So one of the key parameters, one of the key, uh, uh, what do you call, statistic mm -hmm. that the government is always looking at mm -hmm. is employment statistic. Every month they produce mm -hmm. it, and before they produce it, Biden or whoever is president, he's looking at it. Mm -hmm. Because those are the indicators of how the country is going. Mm -hmm. And the government, the government cannot provide those services. Mm -hmm. Who does? It's the private sector. Mm -hmm. So when you are providing jobs to people, mm -hmm. you have incentives. When you are building bridges, you have incentives. Mm -hmm. When you are provide, when you have a business that is growing the net worth of a country, you have incentives. All those incentives are put there. The only person who gets, oh, you get a stimulus. Last year, a few years ago, we had all these things that were going, it's still going on now, mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. And many people, we had what they call stimulus. Mm -hmm. Stimulus, the first stimulus that people had was six hundred dollars per mm -hmm. person, and that was for people who were earning up to seventy five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and people who were above that didn't give them mm -hmm. nothing. But let me tell you, we give you six hundred dollars per person. Then later on, they give one thousand two hundred and six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Then later on, they come and get they came and give fourteen hundred. Those are those for individuals mm -hmm. who are employees and businesses. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you know how much a business is? Thousands and thousands. They had millions, millions and millions. I give people, PPP, give, I give people millions and millions of dollars within my company. For, e, for EID loans, we gave millions and millions of dollars. There's something called ERC, millions and millions of dollars that people get. So in as much as they give you paychecks, they give you stamps, they mm -hmm. give you food stamps and all the right, mm -hmm. all the less, all the, uh, all the likes, mm -hmm. they are giving all those other people millions mm -hmm. of dollars to sustain you, to yeah. keep you at work. Mm -hmm. So that is something you have to, so those are the type of things I really get irritated and I'm, and I, I'm not irritated, I get so passionate about, about mm -hmm. educating our people mm -hmm. to understand how this system works and take advantage of this system. Wow. Yes. Now, you just talked about educating our people. Yes. Is there any place, is there any platform, is there any medium, is there any, 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 any I don't know, somewhere you think they can go to get knowledge, especially from you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I was, you asked me about CHN Advisor. I just mm -hmm. started and then I went on mm -hmm. to the place. Mm -hmm. CHN Advisors is, it's kind of a, it's a group that we have. We mm -hmm. call it CHN Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, CHN Advisors provides we provide a list of services. Mm -hmm. Number one, I help people, we help people with tax resolution. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of people when they become entrepreneurs and their tax bill goes up. Mm -hmm. They struggle, they don't even pay the tax bill, they start avoiding. Mm -hmm. Before they know it, they get this tax, they get an examination from the IRS, before mm -hmm. they know it, they have these long letters coming from the IRS hounding them and things mm -hmm. like that. I help resolve taxes. If you have anything Mm -hmm. Any tax debt, if the mm -hmm. IRS is saying that you owe them anything more than ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, if it's less than ten thousand, still call us. Mm -hmm. We are going to tell you what to do. But what we basically take on and then help people with anything over ten thousand dollars, up to a million, two millions, we help you resolve that. The first thing we do we stop any harassment mm -hmm. on hold. Immediately I put myself as the POM your file. I will tell the IRS, stop any harassment, they call me, they talk to me. That's number one. Number two, we get people from a million dollars, mm -hmm. we bring them down to almost zero. Mm -hmm. And at times we get we mm -hmm. get you to zero, depending mm -hmm. on your circumstance and depending on the information. 90% mm -hmm. of the time, it's an error. There's something going on. Mm -hmm. We fix that. We help you fix that in coordination with the IRS. You mm -hmm. have to be licensed to be mm -hmm. able to do that. We do that. Number two, number three. we help that was number three. Number th that was number one. Tax resolution. Okay, okay, that's true. Tax resolution. Number two is tax planning. Mm -hmm. We help people structure their businesses. Mm -hmm. We help people plan their taxes. We help people in all of these things that I said right now. For example, I mean, there are so many examples. I could talk on this show for mm -hmm. two hours and it will not stop. But we help people with tax planning. And all of these things, 
for example, if you're doing a business and you have all the problems I just said about taxes, mm -hmm. you can basically avoid those taxes by speaking to someone who understands the tax law because there, there's a big difference between a tax preparer mm -hmm. and a tax planner. Mm -hmm. A tax preparer is somebody who has, who has train for two, three, four weeks for a month mm -hmm. or two months mm -hmm. and he now understands how to take information and, and, use feel it. and fill them in a, in a template mm -hmm. and then it produces results Result. that are now filed to the IRS. That's mm -hmm. a tax preparer. He's licensed by the IRS to do that. Mm -hmm. That's a great job. Mm -hmm. But a tax planner is someone who understands the tax laws, who understands all the nuances in the tax laws and can use those laws and then make you take advantage of certain things or use a, a number of different laws mm -hmm. and make you avoid certain things. And that is where I've been talking about. We help you build wealth, build your, uh, your generational wealth tax-free because we help you avoid those taxes. And we tell you where you can put money for your children or where you can save money, save that money and build it for I was just talking about Elon Musk, and if you mm -hmm. give me a minute, I'll talk about that. The third thing we, talk, we do is we help people access capital. Accessing capital is one of the things that we just don't understand how to do it in this country. Mm -hmm. There are two things that are going to give you access to capital. Two. Mm -hmm. Two things. Number one, for those of us who are starting, who are starting in business, who want to run something, number one is your personal credit. It's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. But it's even my biggest thing, the biggest thing that gives you access to money is your tax return. So when you prepare your tax return with that guy in the streets or somebody who doesn't understand, understand he, and then you avoid certain things, you tell them don't show this, mm -hmm. don't show that, you're just inhibiting or limiting yourself from having access because mm -hmm. your tax return is that strategic document mm -hmm. that allows you to get access to those things. The biggest thing about this country is having access to other people's money, mm -hmm. getting capital by the use of other people's money. When you, the point is, accessing you can access the way you build wealth mm -hmm. is by using other people's money when you use earn income it gets taxed mm -hmm. so accessing other people we help you to be able to have access to capital mm -hmm. we structure your taxes in a way that allows you to get out mm -hmm. let me give you an example you wanted to buy your first home mm -hmm. what's the first thing they ask you tax return. they ask you for your tax return mm -hmm. so they tell you how much you qualify for based on that tax return. Mm -hmm. When you want to buy the first business, what are they looking for? They'll ask you for your tax return. You want to buy anything of value, they'll ask for tax return. There is something about that tax return that you need to enhance to be able to so get So if I get you money. correctly, uh, we should, our community should try looking for people who understand tax, like tax planners. Absolutely. Instead of uh, what a tax preparer who just shows up at the end of every tax season to help you fill up those documents and then uh, they get whatever they get and they disappear. Let me tell you, um, Tori boy, <coughs> Tori day. For a young man like you, mm -hmm. you want to build generational wealth for your kids. Mm -hmm. If you started, for example, you, how many kids do you have? One. You have a kid. Mm -hmm. How old is your kid? I'm, I'm sorry Ten. to say that. Ten. Mm -hmm. Your child must be working for you. Must be. When you work, that is, I'm just giving you one of the strategies. Mm -hmm. If you took that child, for example, mm -hmm. and then you say, okay, this is my 10 year old. He does a lot of work for you already. Mm -hmm. Remember when you start any business in this country, anything mm -hmm. you're doing, your first partner in that business is the IRS. Mm -hmm. It's the IRS. Because whatever you make from that business, you're going to share with them. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay their share in taxes. Mm -hmm. So. In as much as you are able to share those, those give your profit, you have you're also you they also contribute in your expenses through deductions. Okay, let's say you started a business and the, you are making let's say you're making you're netting three hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, you take that three hundred thousand dollars. First of all, there is something you are going to be in that tax bracket that they call. The twenty, the thirty-seven percent tax bracket. Mm -hmm. That's your minimum tax bracket, thirty-seven percent. So you want to reduce your taxes. First of all, 
you take that child, he's working for you, you employ him because there is no, the, 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 the labor laws doesn't state the age at which a child has to start working. Mm -hmm. Number two, it doesn't state the age. There's only a tax, there was a tax court decision that came out and said, it said in one of the cases, they said a child can be reasonable to work at the age of seven. So people have been taking, so experts have been taking that year seven and using it as a basis. But if you have a child who is five and you can reasonably show that this child did work that was valuable to the business, mm -hmm. because there are two standards in what you call deductions. Mm -hmm. When you're doing deductions, there is the standard for deduction is it, the deduction has to be, it has to be ordinary is number one standard. Mm -hmm. Ordinary means in every business of the same kind, you will see those, you are expecting to see those type of expenses. Mm -hmm. The number two is necessary. That standard of necessary means it is something that you determine. When you run this place, mm -hmm. you know what is necessary to run this place. Yeah. Nobody can come and tell you. Mm -hmm. So you have, you are the person to determine what is deductible for you. Your child, by law, you can give your child, your child can be doing your videos, he can be posting some things, on, mm -hmm. and then you write that, you go through the normal process of recruitment, and then you make sure you're paying that child. When you pay that child, you're able to basically run that child's life out of your business without taking money out of your pocket. If you did not do that, you will still expense those same expenses, those funds. So that's number one. And the government, that child, there's something called standard deduction. Mm -hmm. That is the maximum amount of money you can earn without paying nothing. So if you pay this child for 2021, the standard deduction is 12,550. You pay that child 12,550 in 2021, you paid him. That money, You've reduced it from your taxes as a tax free. Yeah. And then your child receives that money and he's not paying no tax. So now you can actually run your child's life out of with the help of the government. Number two, which is more even more important, that money that you have that, that child has, you mm -hmm. put in a bank account. And it's it put in a bank account of his. Mm -hmm. That money, you can take that money, the first part of that money, you put it in something which I call, which is called um Custodial Roth IRA. <clears throat> Remember, when you invest money and it grows, it grows with taxes. Mm -hmm. And it grows, the tax rate is high. Mm -hmm. But now you're taking money that is already after tax. That child's money. Mm -hmm. You put part of it in a Roth IRA. You put part of it in an educational fund. Mm -hmm. Where, when he goes to college, mm -hmm. that is where he's going to be removing money to pay for his college.